Wendy devotes 30 minutes to every person that wants to talk to her. Um, That's my favorite. I feel like I should have an air guitar and just be going crazy and banging my head up and down and all so that there's stuff. The links to the right there. Um, get on her calendar. She's usually booked a couple of months in advance. And that reminds me, we have a comment section on the right side or underneath your screen, depending on the platform that you're joining us from. So you can ask us questions uh, live on the air. And if we can answer them, we will. If we can't, we'll make one up. <laughs> That's right. That's so, awesome. uh, for you guys that are just joining us, I am kind of remote today. I'm in Inglewood, Florida, where it's uh, very, Always sunny and sunny, very, very uncomfortable, 80 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Yeah, it's awful. That's why my eyes look like this. I'm uh, <laughs> fishing yesterday. <clears throat> So uh, again, um, today's Veterans Day. I, I want to thank uh, yep. all of our thank veterans for their service. Mm -hmm. And um, hopefully we can celebrate a little bit later on in the day. I know a lot of towns are having parades, uh, but we, we should be thinking of our veterans every day. That's for sure. Yep. We so right. um, without further ado, I, I, like do, to, I, do. <laughs> I want to bring <laughs> Stephanie on. Uh, Stephanie uh, Walker, please come back from the green room. <laughs> you didn't mess with any of those green M&Ms in there, did you? Oh. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Well, it's uh, it's a pleasure to have you on. Um, uh, reading your, your bio, you've done some remarkable things. Um, one of them is studying biochemistry. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, I'm on the edge of my seat wanting to learn more about that. <laughs> what a brain you must have. That's amazing. <laughs> well, yeah. That tells you you don't really know what you're wanting to do when you're 18. You just kind of go with the flow on that. <laughs> this That's is amazing. true. I went to school to become a dental laboratory technician, and I'm not using that skill. Mm -hmm. My brother has a uh, degree in geology and geography and he owns a concrete company <laughs> <laughs> what'd you study wendy i went to seminary well you're still doing that well i was talking yeah. before that uh, when you were oh, much younger yeah before that it was marketing and i actually did it so all right well good for you jonathan yeah. jonathan what'd you I study uh i was uh political science sociology and criminology I was going to be an attorney. All right. Uh, well, we're glad and, you and he'd make a great one. <laughs> <laughs> he'd make a great one. He acts like an attorney all the time. <laughs> so, um, Stephanie, give me a little. Uh, I know that you went into the insurance um, business when you got out of school, um, and you were on the uh, claims and, and adjustments side of things. Um, uh, what what do you think of that side of the business? It was uh, it was interesting. It was um, <laughs> because I was uh, handling right before I left. I was I was handling like very complicated um, claims, very complicated accidents. But it, it it would wear on you because every day you you come and you'd get a couple files given to you with you know a sad story a picture of dead people you know it's just mm -hmm. uh they were it was very draining um but you know really made me see the value of insurance but just working in the corporate world i you know did about i mean i was in that for eight years and i had been sat down and they told me where they saw me going in the company and wasn't really where I wanted to go. And then they gave me a 2% raise and said, enjoy yourself with that. And I, <laughs> I, you know what? I went home and talked to my dad who was still alive at the time. And he, he, he is, you know, my role model and he is an entrepreneur. He was a second generation entrepreneur. His father came straight over from Germany and um, he's like, Steph, you, you know what you're going to get if you stick with this. 
um, or you can get out and, and kind of make your own destiny. And so that's what I decided to do. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And you're in, you're in a part of real estate that a whole lot of women don't dive into. Right. Um, yeah. So that's really, really extra interesting that you're doing that. Tell us how you really got into the real estate world. Well, uh, when I started my insurance agency, I always loved real estate. I didn't have a great deal of education with it, but it made, it always made more sense to me, real estate than stocks. So I would always invest in, you know, small single family or duplexes you know, in areas of Colorado where I thought there would be growth, you know, and I had, a, you know, I was, happened to be good at that. Um, but I wasn't a particularly great landlord um, <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I'm too soft. I could never raise the rent and, you know, I wasn't really ever cash flowing tremendously, tremendously. So um, I was invited to this boot camp about syndications and I'd never heard of it, never heard the terminology, went to it and that absolutely changed my life. Just, I, I loved the concept. I'd never heard of it, of a group of people buying something bigger than anyone could do on their own. And so then that was in 2016 and I just, went full force into learning because that actually you do need to learn. You can't really wing it. Um, so you just like threw myself into learning, did my first syndication and at the end of 2018 and realized I didn't ever, ever want to do one by myself again <laughs> um, <laughs> and teamed up with my, with a partner who we kind of met because we were in the same kind of, uh, I guess it's called RE Mentor, and that's where a lot of people go to train for this. Mm -hmm. And I met my partner there, and he loves to find deals and be hard and you know, uh, negotiate the devil out of some of these things until we get a, a good deal on something, and then I I raise money, and so that that I fell into that real, real nicely. I love doing it. And, um, and so now we're on our eighth deal together, but you're right. There's um, no women, <laughs> very little women in this industry. That's right. So tell us a little bit about what uh, one of your syndication deals would look like. Ours now we're on our eighth one. So we're, we're getting very, you know, we have our, our system down. We know, what we're good at and what works. And actually Florida is where my partner has lived for the last 35 years. And he was a commercial broker for 35 years. So we're just very focused on all of our properties, except one are located in Florida. And so they're, they can be a little bit of everything, but like the perfect deal that we come across is a value add um apartment complex um we we have one under contract right now 160 units in tallahassee um the market there is is fantastic for what we're doing it'll be our fourth acquisition there since um 2019 and so um we on all of our eight investment deals we've given our investors 20 percent annualized rates of return. And I was wow. on someone's show the other day and they were like, you mean, okay, so if you hold on to that for three or five years, you give them 20%? No. I said, no, our, we, our goal is to double our clients' money within the time that we hold their money. So that would be doubling their money within the three to five year period. Wow. And also then they get paid the, um, they get paid passive income almost, you know, once we stabilize the property, which takes probably three months, they start getting monthly cash flow check all the way through the whole period. So, wow. so, so when you say 20% annualized, is that with the depreciation component factored in as well, or is that just straight cash flow? That's straight uh, returns of what we, of what we promise that we do the cost segregation above and beyond that. Mm -hmm. And which most people have never heard of. So that's a great question. Mm -hmm. Um, but no, the cost segregation is something pretty special in multifamilies in that 
most people don't understand that when you go and you do your investment in that, like put a hundred thousand in or, or 50,000, whatever it is that that first year you'll get probably a tax write off of between 35 and 45% of your investment. Mm -hmm. And that's just in the first year. You know, if we hold it for three to five years, you'll probably be able to write off your whole investment, Hmm. which is why I love real estate because you can't really do that with anything else. (laughs) And for people who don't know what cost segregation is, that it's where you have a third party company come in and they identify all the depreciation, um, timelines of everything in that project and you can accelerate the depreciation of certain line items uh, because the lifespan of those line items are shorter um, so in in the irs accepts that it's a it's a great tool yeah that, it really <clears throat> is that people use in multifamily and self-storage yeah yeah mm. for sure well, stephanie what's your typical strategy is it a, a refinance and hold or is it a sale um, well, with us, we kind of started, we, our goal for both of us, we just happened to share the same values, but for us, we wanted to grow real organically and slowly. We didn't want to use, um, institutional money. We wanted to have individual investors in each of our deals. And so if you know anything about raising money, it takes a little time <laughs> to get yeah. you know, investors, uh, you know, especially if, this one we're going to be closing at the end of the year is a raise of $7 million. So we couldn't just start out with that amount. So we, we started more like in like 20 to 30 units. And then we built up to like 50 and 60 units. And then now we're uh, this, this property is at 160 units. And we did that specifically because we wanted our investors to invest with us once and then be so happy that they want to invest again and again. So I'm sorry, I'm going into a long answer here is our small (laughs) properties we we just want to sell them actually the the smaller ones but like this 160 unit and we actually closed on a 55 unit last month those are legacy properties they're you know we look at them as legacy properties so yes we will probably refinance those um give the clients their returns and then ask them if they want to continue you know um in the project or if they want to um, do a different one now, do you do you let them retain their equity position through perpetuity, or is there a, a buyout period, or or is it both? Yeah, uh, it's whatever the we are. We have small enough investor. You know, I don't think we have more than like thirty or forty investors in any one of our projects. So we can talk to you know people and see what they want to do, and we're we're very accommodating because we couldn't do what we do without our investors. So, right. you know, we are going to make them over backwards, make them happy to be sure they get what they want. Absolutely. That's awesome. Now, are you doing just multi, uh, multi-unit multi residentials or are you doing mixed use, light industrial? What are you dipping into anything different? We're not, not real. I mean, this year was a weird one um, because if you know anything about multifamily, it's just, it's so, so competitive. So Mm -hmm. this year we kind of went a little out of our, our comfort zone and, and um, got brand new construction from a developer who just wanted to build and, and be off with it. And so that's like a B it's a B property, but it's, it's brand new construction, which really isn't what we necessarily look for. And then we also are involved in a a pretty cool project in Davie, Florida, where we're building um, 24 luxury homes that are all green, um, completely self sustained. Like they've, they've got the Tesla power walls and um, they could, they can be completely off the grid. And so that's been kind of exciting this year. It's just wow. our desk, but our bread and butter is, is the value add, you know, and that's what our investors like too, is just, you know, the value add B properties in great locations in Florida. 
Gotcha. Well, I've got a buyer for your smaller properties if you're interested in selling. <laughs> yeah, I, we'll talk I, later. You know, we're, we'll talk off, offline for sure. But I was, I was going to say we 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 also have probably if you're looking for investors, we can probably help you out there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I, I was going to say if you have 24 houses and they're all the same color, doesn't it make it difficult for people to figure out which house is theirs? Because because the, <laughs> they're green. Because they're green. <laughs> Yeah. That's true. Yeah, that's oh, true. Wow. <laughs> He'll be here all week, folks. Yeah. <laughs> well. um, what are the benefits of having the depreciation for your uh, investors is that when you do hit that sale, if they don't take the depreciation, you know, each year that uh, they can get it, they can hold it. And then when the sale happens, uh, when they get that. Uh, uh, Capital gain. Yeah, thank you. I'm, it, it, they're they're trying to realize capital gains before they're even realized. So it's been kind of a block in my brain. I'm, I'm trying to block it out. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, you can save that up yeah. uh, to offset your, your gains, which is awesome. Yes. Yep. That's true. And that beauty is that, you know, with all this rigmarole in Washington and, you know, them talking about 1031s and changing the, uh, you know, the 401k self-directed IRAs type of thing, mm -hmm. dipping into that. They haven't made one word mention of cost segregation. So that's nice um, to know. It that is kind of funny that they skipped over that, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it, well it must it, benefit someone there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> as few people, listen, as few people even know you can self-direct your IRA, there's even fewer people that understand anything about cost segregation. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's, for sure. Yep. Even I come across a lot of accountants that don't understand it. Um, so yeah, it can be a, a little frustrating, but. <laughs> so, uh, listen, I, I get Florida is a great place to be. It's yeah. you know, one of the few remaining free states. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm, I'm a little biased. I'm there right at this moment. Uh, but are you a little concerned that you're um, geographically um, all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. Um, I hear that, you know, from my mom, actually. <laughs> I sound like most people's mom. <laughs> um, I would have said that before COVID, but, um, and I, I forgot to mention, we, we have a couple of retail, small retail, um, uh, you know, places when we first started, we bought a few retails out there as well. But, you know, watching how COVID was handled down there, mm -hmm. watching the, uh, you know, the way that businesses kept open, people kept working. Yeah. Uh, there it's a very landlord friendly state. Mm -hmm. you know, those yep. things, they're huge. And we're not to say, you know, our whole periods are usually the three to five years. Yes, there are some you know, properties that we'll probably keep as legacy properties. We're not opposed to going outside of Florida, but Florida has just been really good and insanely good. You know, just like the the volume of people that are moving there, it's 2000 people a day. And, wow. and quite honestly, Florida just can't keep, they haven't kept up for years now. And so it'll be probably a decade before they fully get caught up with the building, which just means that if you invest in the, in Tallahassee, where we just, you know, bought our third property there, the rent growth last year from 20, 20 to 2021, August of 2020 to 2021 went up 18%. Mm. And, and we have seen that in our, in all, you know, in our other two properties we have there. And so I just feel like it's the time for Florida and yeah, yeah though they're definitely, we're open to looking at other places, but largely in the South, like, yeah, where you guys are. Yeah. When yeah. You, you have the oh, sorry, North, no. North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, not so much North Carolina, even though I live in North Carolina, there's mm -hmm. uh, tremendous growth there, but. Uh, it's not as free as South Carolina, Georgia, <laughs> Yeah, uh, but those are good areas and people are moving there uh, like crazy as well. Mm -hmm. And and I think it's important to mention it's North Florida too, that I think is even stronger, yeah. you know, in that Tallahassee, Pensacola, the Jacksonville, yeah. that whole area, that strip across there. Yeah. Um, I, I would make mention, you know, when you have large migration patterns coming into an area, 
the best, in my opinion, the best <laughs> units to be in or, or asset type is your C and B multifamily. Because those are the ones that are going to fill up the, the fastest. fastest yeah. the, the rents are a little bit lower and more people can afford those. And yeah. it's, it's a great asset to be in when you have a migration pattern coming that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what we look at is bees, you know, that's just our, so our solid, you know, that's, that's all we've done actually since we've been together. So. Awesome. Yeah. Um, that's great. Stephanie. So where do, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry go, ahead. Go, ahead. go ahead. Wendy. Where do you see yourself in the next 10 years? Where, where are you growing toward? What's your, what, what's your pattern? I don't know. This is a weird, this <laughs> is a, definitely my life is, hasn't i mean it's different it's really different i never uh i had just retired from my insurance i sold my insurance agency in july this year never thought that would mm -hmm. ever happen um and now you know and i did that because my passive income i invest in every property we purchase so my passive income is now replaced what you know i was making on my own so i don't have to work awesome. true that's freedom what, that's what real estate is about that's right. true yeah. freedom that's the story yeah. but i i love to get this message out i um which is why i go on a lot of podcasts because i really believe that people need to understand these these types of assets and know that they are these are things that banks uh insurance companies and the wealthy invest in so many people you know they were just talking about how inflation is happening because of all the money they're pumping in for all these you know bills of for mm -hmm. infrastructure and how people are like oh well it doesn't cost them a dime well it does cost you a dime because we're pu pushing all this money into our economy and therefore the dollar is worth less and so that's why everything is, I think I saw this morning, it's like 6% inflation, which is the highest it's been in 30 years. So, I mean, and that hits like your average everyday person pretty darn hard. And like, for me, this was the first year I had almost all my stuff in investments and you don't get taxed as, as heavy as when you're, when you have a regular job with a regular paycheck. That's so right. I, yeah. I want, I don't want to say it to brag. I want to tell people that they need to put this strategy into use for them. Yeah. yeah. Well said. Absolutely. Yeah. Inflation is the worst type of tax because it affects everyone the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The same percentage and it hurts the, uh, basically lower, lower wage yeah. earners the worst. Yeah. 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 No, you're a hundred percent right. It's, and most people, when they invest in, in different things or hold money in a bank, is you know, people tell them like, you gotta, you gotta hold all your money in savings and what they're earning at that is, you know, inflation is outpacing that sometimes 10 X. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you, you, you're, you're wasting your time and you're, you're wasting your future mm -hmm. by doing that and, and investing into assets that appreciate while you can capitalize depreciation. And if you throw in, they also cash flow. Yeah. It's like, it's a it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. I agree hundred percent. Stephanie, how can people get a hold of you? Um, just going to my website is uh, www.erbewealth.com. And uh, we just put up a new uh, investment report that just talks about the five reasons that you should consider this type of investing for yourself. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's a great deal of content on my website. Um, I try to, you know, make it as educational as I can because most people I work with, uh, have not heard of this type of investing. Yeah. Yep. Well, well I, I know Bill was bragging about your website and he, uh, <laughs> sent it to our marketing director and said, here, copy this. <laughs> He was very impressed with it. Well, good. Yeah. I mean, that's what I said. You find stuff in this industry that works and that's what people tell you to do. Just copy it. That's right. <laughs> do, you have a, do you have an open offering at, at the moment? I do. Yep, I do. That That's that property in Tallahassee. In fact, you know, we don't have tons. We did have three this year, but 
two is probably more along the lines of what we put out every year. But this one is our value add property, which is like, you know, what everyone wants to get into and actually is our first one we've had this year. And the reason it's so sparse and few between is we won't buy a property unless, you know, we're making our money on the buy. We absolutely are not buying for future appreciation or anything right. like that. We, so that's why the, it's so hard. We look at hundreds and hundreds of deals before one will pan out. Right. And, and why does, why do they look to, to make it on that and not on the future appreciation, which a lot of syndicators get in hot water doing mm -hmm. buying off the future yeah. appreciation when right. markets shift. Cause we always know they do. Yeah. Stephanie's investments will will largely remain unaffected. Right. Like that's that's why she does yeah. that. Yeah. And all of our like pro forma in our financial packages will show you that we are we're showing rent growth going up three percent, uh expenses going up two or three percent. And that we know darn well is not what the market is actually doing. So we always underwrite our deals extremely conservatively so that even if we have a flat market for a while, which will probably happen, it, it did in Florida, it happened when there was the crash there, the mm -hmm. uh, rents flattened out for a few years. So we want to be prepared for that. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Absolutely. Awesome. Excellent. Um, Stephanie, thank you so much. Um, yeah, this has been great. Good stuff. Great content. Um, I always like to see uh, people go to a boot camp and have it change their life. Yeah, we're, for we're sure. Real, we're, we're real big on on masterminds and, and yeah. education ourselves. And um, we wouldn't be where we are with without that. So, That's right. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Wendell. And, yeah, I Wendell has a question. Is it is this only for accredited investors? Your uh, syndication. Most of them are uh, for accredited, but actually this one, um, we've had a few people come that have been waiting for so long all year for this one, and I have a few. We're changing it to be for some sophisticated ones will be allowed into this. Awesome. One. Yeah. Okay, so well, Wendell's pretty sophisticated, so. <laughs> Pretty sure he's accredited. Yeah. Huh? I think yeah. he wears a top hat. Does that make him? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks again. This was awesome. Yeah, thank you, guys. Th thank, thank you so you. much, Stephanie. And folks, uh, thank you for joining us on the Accredited Investor Show. Um, we are Carolina Capital Management. We are lenders in the Southeast for real estate investors. If you are interested in borrowing money, Go to carolinahardmoney.com, click on the apply now tab. And um, if you're a passive investor looking for passive returns, you can hit the accredited investor tab. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell. Actually, don't forget about Wendy either. It's Wednesdays with Wendy. That's right. It's <laughs> been a great show. Thank you guys. See you next week. Thank you so much.